All right, hey, what's up guys? Uh, in this video, we're gonna set up a dedicated server for our uh, simple multiplayer game um, that we made earlier. Uh, if you don't have the code for this, you can go to GitHub in the link below. So what you see right here is just a uh, simple build script that I've set up in advance. And what this has is four different methods, uh, one called build all, build Windows server, build Linux server, and build Windows client. And this is just a scripted way of building your project. Instead of having to go into the build settings and select a bunch of options every time, you can just sort of run one script that'll do everything for you. And this will be part of the uh, project, so you can just copy paste this from the GitHub link. I also have this uh, very simple bash script that uh, just runs the build all method in that build script. And again, you can just copy paste this from the GitHub. Uh, it's pretty simple. It's just running the uh, Unity editor from the command line, passing in a few options, giving the project path, and then executing build all. So the end result of building all of this will be three different builds, one for a Windows server, one for a Linux server, and one for a Windows client. Uh, for this, we're going to be deploying a Linux server onto uh, AWS LightSail, which is just a simple hosting service provided by Amazon. Uh, so we'll go ahead and go to Amazon Web Services homepage. And uh, if you don't already have an account, go ahead and create an AWS account. And once you have an account, uh, we're going to go ahead and search up LightSail. And you can see it's just launching and managing virtual private servers. And so if you've heard of things like DigitalOcean or Rackspace or whatever, uh, those are all kind of similar services. And LightSail is just pretty much Amazon's uh, competitive offering in this space. Anyways, what we're going to do is set up a simple Linux server. And so what we can do is go to Create Instance. We'll go ahead and select Linux or Unix. We don't need any of these apps, so just hit OS only and Amazon Linux 2 is fine. Uh, for this, I'm just gonna go with a simple $5 a month instance, and we'll rename this uh, to say, you know, Game Server 1. Anyways, back up here in the SSH key pair manager, we're gonna want to create a new uh, SSH key pair. Uh, just hit Create, and we'll call this our default SSH key pair. Hit Generate and we'll go ahead and download that key. And we'll need this in order to connect to the instance and uh, run stuff on it. So back down here, just go ahead and create the instance. And this might take a second to initialize and everything as they're starting it up in, in one of their data centers. But in the meantime, we can go to our Unity project. And if you set up the editor script um, that I showed you just now, you'll see this option up here called build. And we're just gonna go ahead and build server. Hit that and you should see it start automatically building everything. And once the build's done, if we go back to VS Code, we should see a builds folder. And under there, you can see that we have our Linux server uh, built. So let's go ahead and open this up actually in the file explorer. And just double click so you can see what I mean. Uh, so to upload this, uh, it's best if we just zip this. So I'll use 7-zip and uh, just compress it to a zip file. And once that's done, let's go ahead and check if our instance is done uh, setting up, and it is. So I'll uh, just click on here, and you can see that it, uh, Amazon gives us a public IP and a username that we can use to connect using our own SSH client. So let's go ahead and copy this IP, and in our terminal, we'll go ahead and run ssh-i, and then wherever you stored that uh, key pair that we downloaded earlier, for me, it was under downloads, and it's just called default SSH key pair .pm, and this is what lets you uh, connect to this uh, server. And then we'll type in the name of the user, which is ec2-user at, and then the IP address. And it's gonna ask us if we wanna continue connecting, just hit yes, and we're in our new instance. So let's just go ahead and clear everything out for now. And now we're gonna upload our build uh, the zip file from earlier, which was right here, to this uh, Linux server. So the command to do that is scp-i, and then again from before, the default ssh key pair .pem, and then we specify the path to our zip file, which in this case is gonna be builds slash Linux 
slash server dot zip. And then the user, which is EC2 user at the IP address, and then colon dot. And the colon and dot basically means where on our Linux server we want to put this uh, zip file. So we're just going to put it right at the root. If we hit enter. So now if we go back to our terminal tab and just see what's there using ls, um, you can see that we've got our zip file uploaded. Uh, so to unzip this, all we have to do is type in unzip server.zip and it'll unzip all our files. And if we check what's there, we have our server folder. So let's go into there. And this right here, the server.x86 underscore 64 is what we'll be running as the server. So back in the management console, we're gonna to wanna to configure the firewall of our instance to only allow traffic from port or to port 777. And since we're using the telepathy transport, uh, which uses TCP, we'll only be adding one rule and specify the protocol as TCP and port 777. And then go ahead and create. And that's pretty much it. That's all we have to do to set up the firewall. So back in the terminal on our uh, Linux server, uh, let's just go ahead and run the server um, using dot slash server, oh, whoops, dot x86 64. Oh, and I forgot that uh, we have to uh, make this an executable. Um, so let's just go ahead and hit, uh, type in chmod plus x dot slash server dot x86 64. And if we try that again, it should run just fine. And you can see uh, Unity is initializing everything. And down here, the telepathy transports initialized, the server started, and it's listening on port 7777. And so if we go back to Unity and hit play, let's go ahead and join that server as a client. So we'll just paste in the IP from earlier and hit client. And you can see we've connected to the server. And if we hit client ready, we should be able to move around and we can. So let's go ahead and actually try this with multiple clients. Um, using Peril Sync. So I'll just go into Peril Sync, the Clones Manager, open up a new editor, and once that's open, let's just go ahead and hit play on both. Paste in the IP, and we'll hit client, client, client ready, client ready. And we've got two clients connected to a server on the cloud. Um, so you can see, this is going all the way to the server and back. So the delay is uh, pretty noticeable versus if we were just running um, on localhost. And I think uh, the server that I have is running in Oregon and I'm based in Seattle, so like that's pretty close. But you shouldn't worry too much because this is probably almost as good as it gets. There are many tweaks that we can make, like using UDP instead of TCP um, and, and not using the default network transform. But, but overall, uh, I think this is not a bad place to start. Um, but anyways, that's uh, pretty much all you need to do to set up a dedicated server for your game. A lot of people make it seem like it's a lot more complicated than uh, it really is. And the great thing is, uh, it's only $5 a month to get started. So there really isn't much of a barrier to entry for this. Um, but anyways, if you guys want to join the community or you know you have any questions and need help, uh, feel free to join our Discord server. If you want to support the networking series and keep it going, any contributions on Patreon are uh, really appreciated. I hope you enjoyed this uh, and found it useful. Uh, finally, a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters. I really appreciate your contributions and your support keeps the series going.